Well, we're here today with Dr. Dave Reagan for this episode of Prophetic Perspective, and we're talking about his tremendous book, America's Suicide. Dave, that's an alarming title, but really there's a, a good reason for that title. You say America is in the, the process of committing national suicide. Yes, I, uh, I think we are because we are a nation that has forgotten God. And that's just, uh, you know, I, in one of the places uh, between the, the various chapters, I try to give uh, quotes. And one of the most powerful quotes in here is on page 114, Psalm 917, the wicked will go down to the grave. This is the fate of all nations who ignore God. Very and that's where we are. We are not just a nation that's grown cold in God, which has happened many times in the past. And Christians would fervently pray for revival and God would send revival. And there are many pastors today that are saying that will happen again. And I hope they're right. It's not impossible. But based upon what the Bible says about how God deals with nations, it appears to me that we have reached that point of no return, that the wound has become incurable. And there certainly are no passages in prophetic scriptures about a great worldwide revival in the end times. In fact, what the Bible has to say about the church in the end times is horrible. It just says the church is going to grow a completely apostate, full of heresy, full of cults and all kinds of doctrines of demons. And that's what we have in the church today. We have even people who claim to be evangelical saying that there are many roads to God. <laughs> there's only one road to God and that's Jesus. If you say there's many, you're calling Jesus a liar because He's the one who said it. And, and this is the kind of thing that's going on. The Bible says in the end times the church will be consumed with apostasy. It says that society will be as violent as it was in the days of Noah, full of immorality. If you go over to Genesis 6, what are the two characteristics? Immorality and violence. We look around us today, what do we see? Uh, we see a, a, a sexual perversion movement in America that's growing like wildfire. We see violence in the streets. We see snatch and grabs. We see crime escalating. It's just out of control. And it's because God has stepped back and said, okay, you want to live that way? You can live that way. Now that's called abandonment wrath in yes. your book, right? As America pulls away from God, it seems like God is pulling away from America. Can you explain a little about abandonment wrath is and other ways that God is trying to get our attention and shake us and yes. what's His purpose? Well, uh, whenever God gets ready to pour out wrath on a nation, He always warns. And He does it in one of two ways, in two ways actually. First, He will send prophetic voices. And we have had, I, I, I wrote a whole book about that, uh, God's Prophetic Voices to America, in which I pointed out in the mid-1970s, God raised up a whole group of people uh, who were prophetic voices to America, calling this nation to repentance and warning of God's wrath. And since that time, since 2000, He's raised up many more. And I, I outline all of them in there. Uh, many voices that God has sent calling us to repentance. No repentance. Okay, the second thing God does is when people will not uh, acknowledge the prophetic voices, He sends remedial judgments. These are judgments that are designed to catch our attention, to call us to repentance. And so I, I believe, for example, the Vietnam War was one. It's a war that, you know, we ended up in total humiliation and disgrace as we uh, pulled out, just as we did in Afghanistan. In fact, that's one of the remedial judgments that's mentioned by God in Deuteronomy 28. He lists a whole series of them, and one of them is defeats in foreign wars and war, foreign dominations. We see China taking over more yes. of the industry in this nation. Uh, but uh, it, it's, it's just incredible what, what is going on here with remedial judgments. I, I, I believe the Vietnam War was one. I believe the 9-11 attacks were one. I believe the uh, Hurricane Katrina. Look at Hurricane Katrina. It formed almost overnight. Most of the hurricanes come all the way across the Atlantic Ocean. It formed almost overnight in the uh, Bermuda area, came into the Gulf. And when did it happen? On the last day that we forced Israel, forced them to withdraw from Gaza. And, and if you saw the scenes of that, they were horrible. And on the very day that the gay Mardi Gras was supposed to begin in New Orleans, that year it was uh, Jazz and Jezebels was the title that year. And uh, it, it's God just calling out to us. And, and my wife at the time, my first wife who's gone on to be with the Lord, uh, she got so upset over the fact that there was an absolute explosion of bumper stickers all over the United States that said, God bless America. The response to these dis disasters was patriotism. And she said, those are wrong. And I said, what do you mean they're wrong? She said, God has already blessed America. We need bumper stickers that say, America bless God. And she was right. 
but we're not blessing God. We are, we are in absolute rebellion against His Word, and uh, we are a nation that, uh, as I said before, our problem is not systemic racism. Our problem is systemic godlessness. That's about what I was going to ask you right now, because I think you hit the nail on the head. It is not that we have all sorts of other institutional problems. We are systematically taking God out of our society, shaking our fist at Him, and turning away. Yeah, and you know, uh, as I pointed out in in several of my writings, and I think in this book too, um, when Alexander Solzhenitsyn was kicked out of the Soviet Union, he came to the United States. And he was invited to speak at Harvard uh, commencement ceremony, and he arrived a, a hero. I mean, this was the man who fought communism, and and he spoke to the Harvard faculty. They ended up booing him because he told about the fact that he said, "I asked the older people in Russia over and over, why has this occurred to us? This 70 years of suffering under communism." And they always said, "Because men forgot God." And he said, folks, that is what's happening in America today. You have forgotten about God. And they started booing him. They don't want to hear that. He, he, he left with them booing. And that was in 1970s. Wow. 1970s. Look at us today. So where is the hope? Uh, obviously, this is a book that has much to say about the status of our nation. Uh, we sense it, even non-Christians, I think, sense that something is amiss, something's going wrong. But we also proclaim a message of glorious hope. So, well, yes, I, I end the message on a strong uh, uh, message of hope. I talk about how the uh, one one of the things is that what we're seeing occurring is a matter of hope because the Bible says this is what's going to happen in the end times right before the return of Jesus. It's indication we're living in the season of the Lord's return. He's at the gates of heaven. He's ready to return. In fact, uh, just last night I had a, a an attorney here in Dallas called me who had just finished reading the book. And um, he was a man who served for many years under one of the greatest district attorneys in Dallas history. He was a prosecutor and he's about 75 years old now. He had still practicing law. He said, I read this. He said, I was just going to look through it, but I couldn't put it down. I read the whole thing. And he said, you know what blessed me the most in this book? That last chapter where you talked about hope and, and the hope that we have as Christians and, and what you said about the rapture and what you said about the millennial reign of Jesus and what we're going to do during that time and about how we're going to spend eternity with God and, and on a new earth in, in bodies that are, are perfected and, and immune to disease. He said, boy, that just blessed me so much. And I was really, <laughs> I, I was really blessed by that. But yeah, I, we have so many promises in the future as Christians that, that are hope. And uh, the, the hope that even right now, as uh, people have said, you know, that the world is gl growing gloriously dark. You have to be a Christian. You have to be a person in the Word to understand what that means. What does it mean the world's growing gloriously dark? Because the Bible says that what's happening right now is going to happen before Jesus returns. Yes, it's growing dark, but it's gloriously dark because it means Jesus is about to return. It certainly does. Or as Jan Markell always says, the world is, people told me and say, the world is just falling to pieces. And I said, no. All the pieces are falling into place. <laughs> they certainly are. Well, folks, we obviously want that you would be able to get a copy of America's Suicide, which is filled not just with the truth of where we are as a nation, but with glorious hope, and it points to our blessed hope, none other than Jesus Christ. Dave, we look forward to your next book. Okay. We'll have you back again for another prophetic perspective right. to talk about that and many more things. But for today, we wish you all Godspeed. Thank you. 